Hey guys, Derek Craig here with oilfieldbasics.com. Today we're talking about the difference between a conventional well site and an unconventional well site. So here I'm standing at a typical conventional well site here in Appalachia in Monroe County, Ohio. Gonna go over a couple of differences between conventional and unconventional. So first off is the footprint. So notice that most conventional wells, especially in this region, uh, first off, they're everywhere, literally everywhere. The access road I had to came up was literally just a path through the woods, uh, not much at all <laughs> to, to see. Um, there, this is really out in the middle of nowhere. I'm out in the middle of, on top of a hill, out in the middle of the forest, essentially. So these are, are pretty versatile. They're literally everywhere. They, they date back clear even to the 1800s. So these go back a long time, and most of them are going to be sandstone. Um, a, lot, a lot of them are sandstone, some dolomite, uh, some maybe limestone. Uh, but again, those are these wells are drilled into formations of which the oil and the gas have migrated towards, and then they're now trapped in a reservoir. So these are the types of wells that we're talking about as compared to an unconventional well, which is literally tapping the source rock. And a lot of times, conventional well like this, the well itself like a sandstone for example is this well it's going to be a lot more porous and permeable so the flow of hydrocarbons to that rock is going to be a lot easier it's going to be a lot easier for the well to be produced so the scale is a little bit different typically they don't require hydraulic fracturing if they do it's mostly water uh, maybe a little bit of acid maybe a little bit of sand uh, the, the scale is a lot smaller again this most of these are going to be vertical holes so vertical wells um, again, just tapping right into uh, a porous and permeable reservoir as compared to an unconventional well like the Utica Marcellus or Eagleford or anything else um, of the shale plays across the U.S. These are going to be very tight rocks. They're not very permeable. Um, the porosity kind of varies on them, but either way, it's not very permeable, which means that there's, there's a lot of organic content down there to be had, but it can't travel very easily. It can't flow. So that is the reason that we have to do larger scale hydraulic fracturing on those wells. And of course, most of those wells are also going to be horizontal. Again, this goes back to economics. This is going to be um, because there, you know, there's a lot of organic carbon and content down there, a lot of hydrocarbons to tap. Um, but again, it's such tight rock, it wouldn't be as economical to literally drill a straight vertical well into it and then frack around it. You're not going to get very much resource. You're not going to get very much hydrocarbons. Whereas if you go down and you drill horizontal, and you can frack all the way along that lateral, then all of a sudden you've got a lot more contact with the formation and hopefully a lot more to produce from and your economics hopefully will look a lot better. And obviously they do, otherwise they wouldn't keep drilling these horizontal unconventional wells. Another thing to notice is the footprint. So this is a, again, a conventional well here in the middle of the woods. We have the well itself and the well head is literally right there. That's, that is the well head, that's it. This is the pump jack that's literally just facilitating the production of oil and gas. And pump jacks aren't just with conventional wells, they also, are, you also see them on unconventional wells out west and in oil plays, oil shale plays, um, such as Eagleford, Permian, etc. And, and those, are, they're usually much larger. Um, this is actually a fairly good size for a conventional well. Most of them are even smaller. And it really depends on how deep the well is. And we'll talk about what a pump jack is in another video. But essentially the footprint of this well site is much smaller than an unconventional site. You can see that this is, you know, there's the production equipment for the well, and I go over this in another video, so check that out. But essentially, you know, that's that's pretty much all that they cleared off is just this flat hilltop here. Uh, that's really all that they cleared off for this well as compared to a typical unconventional well, which obviously you have a much larger footprint, a much larger well, uh, well pad itself, but at the same time, uh, you're tapping a lot more reservoir. You're you're, typically, those are going to be horizontal wells, so you can fit a lot more wells on one site. You don't want to put vertical wells in the same formation right beside each other because they're going to be trying to drain from essentially the same spot in the formation, and they're just going to be competing with each other. But if you have a pad of, let's say, six horizontal wells, well, you can take uh, from one well pad, you can go out all different directions in that reservoir. Uh, so surface footprint is a little bit harder to compare. Um, the surface footprint on a per pad basis is obviously much larger with a unconventional well. Uh, you have you know, much larger drilling operations, much larger uh, hydraulic fracturing operations and production equipment, you know, much larger, much more than the couple tanks that they have here. And so that really makes a difference in terms of well pad size. But thankfully there are going to be fewer of them in order to get the same amount of production you would get from conventional wells. Again, these don't make as much. 
uh, a, a unconventional well is going to have a lot higher rates and produce better and longer, hopefully. Um, so uh, while they have a larger footprint, the unconventional wells, it, it has a smaller footprint overall um, to get the same amount of resources. All right, another key difference between a conventional well and an unconventional well itself is going to be wellhead size. So as you can see, this wellhead, uh, which is literally right here, uh, is very small in comparison to that of a wellhead of an unconventional well. And again, the same thing could be said with really anything, the number of tanks, the processing, separating equipment, etc. cetera. Um, basically on an unconventional site, again, you're, hit, you're hitting the source rock, typically it's deeper. Well, it has to be deeper um, than where it migrated to because it would migrate upwards, but typically these are, are pretty deep formations. Um, they're going to be pretty pr high pressured, uh, so the, the pressure rating for the wellhead itself is going to have to be much higher. So uh, th that's going to help enlarge the wellhead, and also, um, also you're going to have more casing strings typically on a unconventional well site, or at least they're going to be bigger. Uh, you're just you just have more to produce. There's more to tap, so everything's basically going to be bigger, including the wellhead itself, and again the production equipment and separating equipment and and all of that. So. Um, this is, is, is a pretty small wellhead uh, compared to that of like a Marcellus or Utica, etc. So, so hopefully this helped clear up some of the key differences between an unconventional well pad and a conventional well pad. So if you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, how they drill, frack, or complete a well, or anything, uh, produce a well, what a pump jack is, etc. More in depth, check out our courses, oilfieldbasics.com. We appreciate it. Be sure to drop us a like, comment, and subscribe. Anything you can do to help us out, we appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.